What is going on guys welcome back in this video we're going to learn how to visualize the stock market capitalization of multiple companies in python so let us get right into it All right, so the stock market capitalization of a company is essentially the total value of all the shares. So the share price times the amount of shares that there are. And here you can see a table with the Dow Jones company. So the Dow Jones industrial average, the index, you can see here 30 companies and we also have the market cap. This is the data that we're going to use in order to plot our tree map. Now, if you have a data set, if you have an API where you can get the market cap for S&P 500 or also for the Dow Jones, doesn't matter. You can use whatever source you want. I'm going to use this website here as an example. So the company's market cap.com website. And we're going to scrape here the ticker symbols and we're going to uh, scrape the market cap. And then we're going to plot this tree map. Now for all of this, we're going to need a couple of libraries and we're going to start by installing those. We're going to open a command line and we're going to type pip install. And the first one is obviously beautiful soup four, which is the web scraping library. So you want to install that. You also want to install requests, obviously. You want to also install uh, matplotlib if you don't have it, matplotlib, like that. And you also want to install, this is probably a new one, Squarify. This is what we're going to use to plot the actual tree map. So once you have all those, we can start by importing them. We can start by importing requests. And by importing from BS4, we're going to import beautiful soup. We're going to say import matplotlib.pyplot SPLT. And we're going to import Squarify. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take a look at that website and see how it is structured. And this website is actually quite simple. So it's not uh, rocket science to get the actual information. So we have this table here. And I think it's the only table on the website. Then inside of that table, we have table rows with table data. And here we have just uh, one, two, three columns is uh, the, the third column is the market cap. The second one is the name with a logo and with two diff boxes, one of them, the company name, which we're not interested in, and one the company uh, code, the company ticker symbol. So this is what we're going to get. Here you can see if I click on it that it has the class company code. So what we actually want is we want to get the table. We got we want to get all the table rows. We want to get from each row the third column, which is the market cap. And we want to get the second column from that second column. We want to get the diff box with the class company code. And here, of course, we need to uh, do some adjustments because of the T. So trillion and billion. And also we want to remove the dollar symbol because the number is important because we want to determine the actual size of uh, the visualization squares or the boxes. So the first thing we want to do is we want to specify the URL. We're going to say URL equals and we're going to copy that URL here. We're going to paste it as a string. Again, you can use whatever source you want. If you have your own website, if you have your own uh, CSV files, whatever that you want to, to use, you can just do that. The first part is the web scraping part. The visualization is quite simple. You can just skip that part if you have your own data. So then we're going to say here response equals requests dot get that URL. And then we're going to uh, take that response and turn it into a soup object by saying soup equals beautiful soup response dot text like that. And this soup object now we can use it to find certain things. And by the way, one thing that I always forget is this LXML here because otherwise we can get some warnings. Um, maybe you have to install it if you don't have it. But now what we're going to do is we're going to get all the rows from that uh, all the table rows from that soup object. Now, since we only have one table, we don't have to worry about getting wrong table rows because that's the only table. And all the table rows are in that table. So we're interested in all the table rows in the whole website. Otherwise, you would have to get all the tables and you would have to get uh, the specific table and from that table, the table rows. But now we can just say rows equals soup dot find all or actually we need to do find children. Um, TR for table row this is the HTML tag. And we do find children because from the table row, we still want to um, to get the table data, right? We don't want to just have the table row. We want to have also the table data because of that. We're going to need find children and not find all. 
And now we're gonna get the individual symbols in a list, we're gonna get the uh, market caps, market caps in a list, and we want to get the um, the sizes and the sizes are not going to be the same as the market caps, they're almost going to be the same. The market caps are going to be the strings with a trillion with a billion with a dollar and the sizes are going to be the actual numerical sizes for the plot. So we're going to say now for row in rows. So for each row in the table, what we're going to do is we're going to try and we're going to try because in the first row, I think we have an empty list. And because of that, we're going to get an error. So we can say here pass except we're going to get an attribute error, S E, or actually, we don't need S E, we can just pass if we get the attribute error. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to execute the code, we're going to say symbol equals row in that row, we want to find a diff box. And this diff box has to fulfill the requirement that it has a class. This class is named company dash code. And from that diff box, we want to get the text, this is going to be the ticker symbol. And then we want to say the market cap is essentially just a uh, row find all table data, and we want to have the third column. So index two, and from that the text. Right. And then we just append two market caps, we want to append uh, market cap. So append market cap, and symbols, we want to append symbols, uh, symbol. And then what we want to do is we want to uh, depending on the T or the B, we want to make trillion or billion. And we also want to cut off the dollar and the T and B itself and also the space. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, if the market cap ends with a T, then we have trillion. And what that means is that we can say sizes dot append. And we want to take the float value of the market cap uh, that we have here, but we're going to start after the dollar. So we're going to skip the first letter, we start with one, and we go up until negative two. So we leave out the last two, which is the T or B, in this case, the T and uh, the space. So we take that. And we multiply this by 10 to the power of 12 for trillion. Then we can say elif market cap ends with B. I'm going to copy that. And change this just to nine for billion. And of course, in this data set, we only have billion and trillion. If you have one with million, you might want to add another elif branch with m and six and maybe one with k and three. And then uh, if nothing, then just nothing, then you just take that value. So you can do that if you want to. But for this case, this is enough. And um, that is essentially it. We now have the sizes, we have the market caps, we have the symbols. And now we can go into the plotting, which is quite simple. If you want, you can also print the values to see what they look like. I'm not going to do this right now. And what we need to do here is we just have to say scorify dot plot sizes is going to be equal to sizes, labels, or label is going to be equal to market cap, or market caps, actually. Um, and then or actually no labels is equal to symbols, right? labels is equal to symbols and we're gonna No, I know what I wanted to do. Okay, sorry, we need to do something else. We need to say labels, because I want to have the idea of my stock market map. Of course, you can just also use the symbols, but I want to have the symbols and below the symbols in parentheses, I want to have the market cap. So I have to generate uh, the string for that I need to say, first of all, symbol um, symbols, I symbols, I then backslash n parentheses, and then in here, I want to have market caps, I and all this for I in range length, symbol, symbols, actually, I think that works. And for the colors, we also want to define the colors. And for that, we're going to use the color map, uh, or one color map, whatever you want to choose here, we're going to say colors equals list. And we're going to say plt cm dot and now we can choose a color map. Now, if you want to have the color map names, you go to the matplotlib documentation, you can also create your own color map, I have a video on that. And if it's not yet uploaded, it will come soon, where uh, I explain to you how to create your own color maps in matplotlib. 
but let's just go ahead and take the tab 20c color map and we're gonna call it and say i divided by float length symbols um and this i is gonna be for i in range length symbols so this is important um the float, as far as I remember, is just to make this a floating point number, because if you divide two integers, it's not going to be a floating point number. Um, it's going to just do an integer division or a floor division or a truncate division. I'm not sure. Um, however, this is how you can generate a list of colors. And you're going to see why this is kind of cool in a second. We're going to say uh, scorify dot plot. Um, and we're going to say sizes equals sizes, label equals labels color equals colors and then bar keyword arguments are going to be just for the for the boundaries for the borders we're going to say line width is going to be 0 0.5 and edge color is going to be 111111 and of course not a comment but a string and then we just say plt show. And if I didn't make any mistakes, this should work now. And you can see it does. So you can see that the color map determines the colors from top right to bottom left here, or from bottom left to top right, I'm not sure. But you can see that in this case, since the list is sorted, we have all the small cap companies or the smaller cap companies, in this case, uh, at the top right with a gray color and the large cap companies, the huge cap companies, the very large cap companies um, are here in blue. So this is actually kind of cool. And we can also change the color map if you want, you can do spectral. And uh, you can see that now we have a color map like this, or we can go ahead and uh, use set two or set three or set one. Uh, and you get all sorts of different colors. So you can choose whatever you like. And you can also choose whatever data you want to visualize, right? So right now we're looking at the Dow Jones index, we can also go to that website, and go to ranking by categories tech, for example. And we don't even have to change the code for that, because we still have the same structure. So I can just copy that, I can go here, and I can make another one, I can call this tech URL is going to be equal to that. And then I don't get the URL, I get the tech URL. And if I run this now, you can see we have more companies. And of course, here now, uh, plotting gets a little bit difficult. So maybe you can uh, adjust some of the styling here. But we can do the same thing now with countries with everything we can go here to um, ranking by countries, Germany, we can take Germany, we can now I'm just going to replace the ordinary URL. URL, there you go. And then we have also the German, uh, the German companies with their German ticker symbols. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to do that for the US. So if you only want to have US companies, you can go here and say, oh, wrong one, sorry, this one here US. And then we run this stop and rerun. And you can see that we have the US companies here. This looks actually very good, very cool. Uh, I'm not sure if we have some million companies here it doesn't look like that. Maybe if you choose smaller countries, you might find something where you have millions. I'm not sure if we maybe go to Poland. Uh, no, okay, we have we have bill, uh, we have millions, but they're written like that. So I'm not sure if we actually will find anything that is not with a B that has an M it doesn't look like that. So we al always have zero point something. Uh, yeah, but this is how you can use that website. Of course, if you use another website, if you use other data sets, you need to adjust, you need to use different uh, class names, different um, HTML elements, different functions, maybe, or you have to use pandas to scrape uh, to, to get data from the CSV files, and so on and so forth. But once you have the data, you can just visualize it with squarefied a plot, you can define the colors like that. And yeah, that is how you plot a stock market map, a stock market capitalization map in Python. Alright, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video. And 